So in today's lesson, we are gonna be talking about how to use triads to write awesome guitar riffs in your songs, or you can do this to any song that you might know already. You could write a new riff to play over the song. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be writing a riff sort of in the same style that you've heard in a lot of different songs. So first of all, uh, I was inspired to make this lesson from uh, playing the song Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. So those of you who have heard it before, it kind of goes like this. So believe it or not, that whole entire riff is written using exclusively triads, okay? And I've been harping on triads nonstop on this channel. Let me give you one more example, by the way. Here's a song, uh, Eight Days a Week by the Beatles. The little intro riff, which is super duper iconic, it's all triads. <laughs> So if I need to demonstrate any more to convince you that triads are important for writing cool riffs, well, I don't know what to tell you because it's very clear that just those two riffs are unbelievably good sounding and they're using triads. So we're going to figure out how to do this on our own so that we can actually, you know, write our own riffs and not just copy everybody else, right? Okay, so step number one to writing out a riff using triads like this is that you gotta know the underlying chord progression that we're playing over. So first of all, you might wanna write a chord progression before. Now, in order to write a chord progression, you need to know the chords that are in different keys, pick a key, and write a chord progression using that. So for example, uh, that song, Sultans of Swing, the chord progression is D minor, B flat, C. So there's a rhythm guitar player playing that in the background, and then this other riff is being played over that chord progression. So even though we are playing chords, even though the triads themselves are chords, it's weird, it's like chords on chords, because you are gonna have someone who's just playing basic bar chords, or maybe even a piano player is playing a chord progression, and then we're going to be a little bit more active uh, with our use of triads and uh, moving them around. You notice how that, that riff right there, it kind of moves pretty fast. And in a way, it actually functions like even almost like a solo or a melody. Even though it is chords, even though there are three notes in each chord, it's still functioning in this way. And that's why we're calling it a riff. because it is an iconic sounding thing. And it's not just like playing chords in the background. It does not function the same way. So we do need to understand the chord progression that we're playing over. So in this video, we're gonna be playing over a really simple and common chord progression. It's gonna be the one, four, five chord progression. So let's listen to it really quick. I'm just gonna play with some bar chords and then we're gonna get to writing a riff on it. All right, so there we go. There is our one, four, five progression. So we have one measure of C, one, two, three, four, a measure of F, one, two, three, four, and then two measures of G, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, okay? So that's gonna be our underlying chord progression. For right now, actually, we're just gonna have a bass in the background, so if you listen, The bass is actually good enough to give us the information of the chord progression. You don't even necessarily need to have a whole entire rhythm guitar track going on behind you. So now that we know that chord progression, we know what triads to 
pick from for writing our riff. So with that being said, we're going to be looking for C triads. We're going to be looking for F triads and we're going to be looking for G triads. OK, so we're not going to cover like every single possible combination of how to play these things that alone will take a long time to get through but uh, that's gonna be your responsibility if you want to go watch my video how to learn major triads on the guitar the right way and that will teach you exactly how to find every single one of these triads on the guitar but for right now let's go ahead and start with one triad shape that's gonna be right here so it's gonna be this c major triad so this is actually, for those of you who know, it's a C major second inversion. Because the C major chord actually has the notes C, E, G in it. But now G is the lowest note. So C is the root, E is the third, and then G is the fifth. And G is the lowest note. So the fifth is the lowest note. So that would make it what we call an inversion. So we're going to base the riff off of we're gonna play this C major chord when we are on the C chord, okay? Now, we're let's gonna find a F chord. Let's gonna find, <laughs> let's find an F chord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a process that's called voice leading. I've talked about this before, but we're just gonna go through it really quickly. Basically, voice leading is, I know that I have I'm on a C chord and I have to go to an F chord, okay? I want to find the closest possible F chord to the C chord that I'm playing. The way that we do that is by knowing the notes there in the C chord, knowing the notes there in the F chord, and moving each note to the closest possible note that's in the F chord. So a C chord has the notes C, E, and G in it, and the F chord has F, A, and C in it. So first of all, there's a C in both chords, so we can just keep that the same. So this C right here on the third string, we're not gonna move that, okay? And then uh, the E is not in the F chord, but the closest note to E, we wanna move it to whatever's the closest note we can find in the F chord. So the closest note in the F chord to the E is gonna be F, so we're gonna move that E up a half step to F, because F is literally only one fret away. And then, lastly, we have the G note. There's no G in the F chord, but the closest note to G is gonna be A. So let's move the G up to A, and then bingo, now we have ourselves an F chord right there. And by the way, this is a very common move that you see either from C to F like this, so again, let's just reiterate that with the diagram. There's C, and then there's F, okay? So either from C to F, or actually from F back to C. And uh, some of you might recognize this riff here. That's from a Rolling Stones song. If you know what song that is, comment below. So these voice leading things, they always create these patterns that are really cool. And this is a really nice voice leading pattern. So whenever I want to go from a C to an F chord, I know I got an F chord right there. I barely have to move my hand. And not only that, it sounds really cool, by the way. Uh, you also saw that one actually in the uh, Dire Straits riff. Uh, and the... By the way, just a little hint, that's another voice leading pattern from F to C. So the opposite way of where we're going. So we're going from C and now we're gonna play F. And then this is a little pattern that you notice all the time. So whenever you go from the four chord to the five chord, you always just move up two frets. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this whole chord up two frets. And by the way, you notice how in the F chord, the F note is the top note, the one that's on the second string. So in this particular inversion, this is first inversion, the root of the chord is the highest note. So we're just gonna move that up two frets. So those are all the triads that we're gonna work with right now, okay? So we have C, and then we have that F there, and then we just move that up two frets, and now that's a G chord, that's our five chords. So so now if I want to, well, let's just try playing that over this uh, backing track. 
and then uh, see how that sounds. Okay, so there you go. So we knew the chord progression. Then what we did is we figured out the triads. So it, at least find one way of playing through the chord progression with just triads, okay? So now here's a very simple way of taking these triads. And now to me, that still sounds more like a rhythm guitar part, okay? It just sounds like I'm playing the chords. Here's a cool way, and this is the main thing I want to show you, is break it into two notes. So if we break each of these triads into little pieces, then we can already, without even adding any extra notes or anything, we can actually make some stuff that sounds really cool and interesting. So for example, let's take that first C chord. So I can either just play the top two notes or I can play the bottom two notes. So I can do that. So here's the top two notes only. Here would be the bottom two notes only. And then actually, here's one more combination that I really like is taking out the middle note. So just taking the outer two notes. And you can do really cool stuff like this. Like if you're familiar with what's called hybrid picking, so I'm playing the lowest note with my pick and then I'm taking my middle finger and I'm playing the highest note. So if I go through that whole entire chord progression in this way, I can say, okay, let me break this part into these two notes. Let's actually do that outer two notes part. I think that sounds really cool. And then let's go to the F chord. So the F chord was like this, but hey, let's, let's just not play this middle note. So here we go. There's that middle note is gone. So now we have this. So before we had this. And then, of course, whatever we do on the F chord, we can basically just move it up two frets. So we just move those two notes up two frets. And then we have this. So let's see what that would sound like if I play it over the backing track now. So to me, now all of a sudden, that sounds really melodic, right? That sounds, now it doesn't really sound so much like a rhythm guitar part. So you can mess around with that whenever you're writing one of your riffs is just take those triads, okay, and then delete one of the notes. And by the way, it's a nice too, because now I, I don't necessarily have to think of as many notes. Now, even though I'm not playing one of the notes, I'm still aware that that note's there, right? And if you really practice your triads enough, you also know where all the other inversions are, and those are all kind of in your head, and you can pull them out whenever you want. But this is just a really, I think, really uh, nice way to just get started. Now we're gonna cover one other thing that we can do, and this is the part that's a little bit trickier, but it's still not that uh, tricky. And this is also gonna help you with your soloing, believe it or not. Because one thing I talk about all the time in soloing is chord tones and non-chord tones. So like if we're playing over a C major chord, yeah, I know that I can play all of my notes there in the C major scale, but the notes that are in the chord are gonna be the most stable sounding ones. And notes that are not in the chord could potentially sometimes uh, pose a problem. We can still play them, but we don't necessarily wanna sit on them too long. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually implement this concept, but for a riff, okay? so. What we want to do is find all of our chords that we worked on, all of our triads, and we want to see what notes are in the key 
okay? Not in the chord, in the key. So in the C major scale, this is a one, four, five in the key of C major. So theoretically, we should be able to use any of the notes that are in the key of C major, right? So, but these notes are gonna be in the key, but they're not in the chord. So they are gonna be directly next to the notes that are in the chord. So for example, let's take this E note up here. So if I take that E note, I can either move this up a fret to F. Let's see what that sounds like. It sounds really cool, even if I'm playing over the C chord, if I just go like this. So all I'm doing is I'm barring this down. Here's the E on top, and then I'm putting this finger down so I can play F and I'm just alternating. So I have that F that's above the chord, or I have a D that, sorry, it is above the chord, but it's above the E specifically. Or I can have D, which is two frets below the E. So I could do something like this. That actually kind of reminds me of a certain uh, Train song. Comment below if you know what song I'm talking about by the band Train. <laughs> uh, uses that kind of motion in uh, one of the riffs in the song. Uh, but anyway, it actually happens in the piano part. So comment below if you know what song I'm talking about. So we can do this with any of the notes. Now I recommend just to keep things simple, just pick one note, okay? Like this E note and see, okay, what notes do I have next to it? And let me mess with those. I don't wanna confuse myself too much yet with all the different notes in the chord. So now let's actually just loop that C chord for a second. And then let's see what it sounds like if I just play messing with that top E note over this. And then of course, if I want to, I can use that same concept of busting the chord into two notes each. So look, I'm just gonna play C and E and I'll mess with that E note. So I kind of like that that little thing. Da -de -da -de -de -da. You can like it now. It's starting to sound really interesting and melodic. And all we're doing is I'm still just thinking of that C chord, but now I am uh, finding those notes that are next to it. So you could just really quickly. You could also say, okay, let me try the other notes in the chord. So C, there is a B right next to it that's in the key, and there's also a D right next to it. So messing with that C note, what would I get? Sometimes you have to modify the fingering, by the way, in order to do this. It helps sometimes when you break the chord into two notes too, that can help, so. So in this case, what I did is I just deleted that top note and I'm going like C, B, C, B, and then going C, D, and then back to C, so just. Just randomly, I'm not, you know, predetermining it out yet or anything, just randomly switching between uh, those notes. And then finally, we could also look at this G note here, and we have an A that's above it, and then we also have an F that's below it. Let me actually go ahead and put all those down there. So here's your C notes, your C chord tones, rather. And then we have this A, and we have this F right next to that G. So, hmm. Sometimes that, that one is pretty tricky to constantly like switch between that F and that A because you really have to change the fingerings. Like this fingering, I have to do this in order to grab this, fing uh, this note down here, this F, but I cannot grab the A that's above it using this finger. I have to switch and like bar this. And 
So a lot of times, actually, in a situation like this, I'll lean more towards just using that A note, okay? Because it's easier for me to grab that. So a lot of times, by the way, you'll just say, okay, let me only alternate between the notes that are there and the notes that are above the notes in the chord. So for example, only E and F, only C and D, and then only G and A. So it's like, now I have all of these notes to work with. And by the way, one observation you might make is actually, that's literally just the chord that's above. So that's actually the two chord in the key. But I can use all those notes, but I wanna kind of eventually work my way back to a C major chord. So let's see what it sounds like. I'm gonna mess with all of those notes now on that C major chord. And I'm just like kind of breaking the chord into little parts too. And you need some control over the pick to do this. You gotta get used to this idea of only strumming two strings actually. I know sometimes that's tough for people. sudden it's really not like rocket science all i'm doing is thinking okay i have the notes in this chord and then i have notes that are next to it in the key they're not in the chord so i don't want to kind of sit on those for too long but i can use those and kind of flip them in and out to my liking. And again, those of you who have watched all my other soloing lessons this is a big thing to talk about is being able to get our way back to those chord tones. But now we're doing it in more of a riffy type of context. So our F chord, well, some of them are, are gonna look similar, right? So F in this shape, well, we have an E that's right next to that F on the left. So let's see what that sounds like. So I was switching between E and F over and over and over and over again. Let's just loop that F chord. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. The, that note, uh, it, it clashes slightly, but it sounds nice when that thing ends up resolving. What if now we find a note that's above F? So there's a note above F, G. So this one... I think that that one sounds really good. Let's see what that sounds like here. So that one sounds really cool. You got those two notes. So on that F chord, we have a note that's one half step below the F and a note that's a whole step below that F note, okay? So we also have C and D here. Uh, getting this B back there, that's kind, of, that's kind of tricky. I don't do that one too much. It does sound different. It sounds very unique and interesting. You might want to use that. You have to modify the fingering heavily. Like I have to use my pinky to play this so that I can hammer on from here to here. Uh, and But what's more common is to just use that D. So that's the thing too, guys, when you're actually doing this like as a sort of chordal riff, you'll start to throw out a couple of options because the, the fingering's not super practical. So I'll do a little bit more of this. <laughs> And again, if I break this up, oh, look, what if I just use this C and the F, and then I alternate between C and D, C and D. I can play that over that F chord. Look, check this out. So, there you go. That's a few different options on there. Actually, there's one more. So 
our A note that's down here, we can uh, grab a G that's right next to it. So this is actually... So you have to actually bar down this in order to get that like as a hammer on. Again, sometimes you have to modify the fingering. I have to bar this down in order to do that. That actually, you see that in um, the song, The Wind Cries Mary by Jimi Hendrix. He plays it in a different set of strings, but it's actually literally the same chord too. It's an F, it ends up in an F chord. It's this idea of hammering on into that note there. So that is, uh, that's actually one of my favorite ones to do right there. So I'm hammering on from G to A. And then guess what? I can do the same thing. Let's go to the G chord. I can do the same thing in the G chord. There's just a couple of slight differences because this is, even though it's a major chord, uh, it is actually a, uh, since it's a different place in the key, it's the five chord, uh, it's a bit different to deal with this one. So first of all, G, the notes that are in the key that are adjacent to that G are F, two frets below, and then also A, two frets above. So let's loop the G chord and let's mess with that. F, G, and A, messing with changing that top note there. So there's the A, I'm playing with my pinky. So this F, I, I wouldn't really play the whole entire chord. There, I would just break that up. I would just say, okay, let me uh, get rid of this B here. Let me not play that. Let me play just the D. A lot of times too, again, I know I've said this a couple times, but it really helps. Not only does it kind of sound cool, but also it helps us be able to play some of these notes that are next to the chord more easily. So that F does sound really cool. So look, all I'm doing is playing this D. I got rid of the lowest note in the chord. I'm playing F. And of course, I'm trying to put a cool rhythm to the whole thing as well, you know, using some upbeats, one, two, three, and four, and this kind of stuff. Use a lot of upbeats. I should be talking more about the rhythm in this whole entire thing. That's one thing in Lat Sultan's swing riff. It goes one, two, three, and four, and. There's a lot of um, upbeats in that riff using upbeats that's a big big simple but important tip use a lot of upbeats in your rhythms and it'll sound a lot more interesting okay let's just look at one more thing and then we'll be done because i know that this has gone on a while as you can see there's so much that we can explore with just the, just these chords here imagine doing this all across the whole entire neck using every single possible combination of triads because ideally we do want to be able to have all of those things accessible to us so here let's check out the d so we have e a fret above sorry two frets above and then also c two frets below. So that one, that C is gonna be hard to grab. So again, there I would be breaking up. If I wanna grab that C, I wouldn't even attempt to play this B all the time. I mean, that's, it also kind of sounds weird uh, because the B and the C clashes. Uh, so just go ahead and, and, and bust that chord into uh, just the two notes if you ever have an issue with that. So let's try messing with C, D, and then E here. And actually, I'm just going to, let's let's do, forget about that. I'm not going to take it off the screen, but I'm not going to play that B because it's just too hard. So I actually do like that C note a lot. playing 
that B. I'm just playing that B and D. Okay, so let's uh, just figure out that last string there. As you notice, I like to be very thorough with these lessons. This ain't a two minute long lesson, because guess what? You're not gonna learn all this stuff in two minutes, okay? So I've had a couple people complain these are too long. Too freaking bad, dude. Go watch someone else who, you know, claims they're gonna teach you everything about guitar in five minutes. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, so anyway, we have B here. This is our lowest note. We can modify this one. So same thing like the F chord. You can play that note that's two frets below. So hammering on from A to B or vice versa. I mean, to me, that just sounds beautiful, guys. <laughs> And then uh, also right next to this, this one's a little bit harder to grab because you got to use your pinky. If I want to play all the notes in the chord, again, sometimes when I don't play all the notes in the chord, I can use an easier fingering, but I can go up a half step to C. So let's mess with that now, that bottom uh, voice. So A, B, and then C are right next to each other, okay? Let's uh let's try that right now. To me that sounds so cool when when we play all those notes and then we end up landing on that B. That could be a riff right there. So now I'm playing those two outer notes like we talked about earlier. Okay, so that's the basically the gist. Know the chord progression, figure out even just one set of triads, and then break each of them into two notes just doing that and then find the notes that are in the key that are next to the triads all right so uh let's just do one more thing now i'm going to play the whole entire chord progression and i'm going to try to implement all of these different things uh over it So you can do that. And then as soon as you start repeating it, memorize what you came up with and bing, bang, boom, you've got a freaking awesome riff that you wrote with triads. So if you want to learn how to master the guitar fretboard so that you can find all of your triads all over the entire guitar fretboard so you can figure out how to do this anywhere that you want to and on top of that over any chord progression in any key then make sure you head on over to jamsville.com right now and pick up the jamsville gps fretboard fundamentals course for the amount of money this course costs this is like taking months and months and months of guitar lessons which can cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars but yet this guitar course is only 69 dollars which is is less than the price of one lesson with a lot of guitar teachers. So make sure you head on over and get that course right now. Also, if you're interested in my favorite guitar picks that have the best grip and best picking edge that I've ever seen, 
They're called the Dan's Guitar Store Precision Pick. Check the link in the description down below. And also check out the Jamsville Merch Store where you can get this awesome Jamsville t-shirt that I'm wearing along with Jamsville hats, mugs, sweaters, you name it. We got it. Also, make sure you check out my new song that I just dropped on Spotify. It's called My Divine. I'll have the link for that in the description below as well so you can hear implementation of all the stuff that I always talk about on this channel. All right, everybody, until next time, make sure you like and subscribe to the, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, listen, learn, and jam.